Lee Time sent me their 36 volt trolling motor battery to do a review. So in this video, I'm gonna do a full review of the battery. I'm going to attach it to a homemade e-bike and I'm gonna see how far I can go with a 50 amp hour battery. And then I'm going to see if I can power a 48 volt bike with a 36 volt battery. So let's get into the video. Bolts on the top. It's well packaged. All right, 50 amp hours, 36 volts. So there's a lot of battery in here compared to a lead acid. If these were lead acid, it would take three of these to equal one of these batteries. Nice quality case. For the capacity of this battery, it is fairly lightweight. There's no rattling or anything in the battery. I'm not gonna open the battery, but there are people that have opened them and they do have a good BMS and they are well made. 1920 watt hours. 34.5 pounds for the lead time marine battery. So this one's an 80 amp hour, 12 volt marine battery. Let's put this on here. It's a beast. Oh. So 50.6 pounds, slightly larger than the lead acid. So this one's like the standard marine battery. So I would need three of these batteries to equal one of this lead time battery. So, I mean, like this is crazy. These are 50 pounds each. The 12 amp hour, seven and a half pounds. So that's not very good. 20 amp hour SLA, 11 pounds. So three of these, would be the same weight as that battery, but this would only give me 20 amp hours. This is 50. So there is so much more watt hours in this battery. It's, it's crazy. Okay, so we'll scan the code here. Let's get this battery hooked up. Okay, so I've got a small 36 volt charger. I'm gonna see if it'll kick in the battery. 39.7, pretty easy to connect it. There we go. So I've connected to the battery now. It's at 39.8 volts. It's 48% charged. So it's not gonna come fully charged, obviously. So it's very important to charge the batteries. One thing I totally forgot about is how am I gonna charge this? I was able to turn on the battery with this 2000 milliamp hour 42 volt charger. So this charger will take forever to try to charge this battery. So it's not even up to the charging voltage of 43.2. This charger is not gonna work for me. So I'd have to order a charger for this battery, but I don't wanna do that. I want a charger now. So I'm gonna have to put together a charger. Let me see what I can do. All right, here is my homemade charger. Now I used an old battery charger, but I've attached a few other things to make this work. So 12 volts AC from the transformer goes to the bridge rectifier, to the smoothing capacitor, and then up to the boost module. And then the boost module is gonna boost my voltage up to the 43 volts. Hopefully I'll be able to charge the battery. So I'm gonna get this onto the battery. And there goes the charger. We got our fans up and running. 43.2 volts dialed in exactly. Now I can adjust that. You can see that, but now it's charging. 39.6, so the battery's taking a charge. It is possible to do this. I don't recommend building your own chargers. Just order one. I just didn't want to wait for a charger. It's pumping about five amps into the battery. The cool thing about this app is that it actually tells you what's going on with the battery and it even you can even balance the battery so it's doing that right now that's why it's actually uh taking some current uh from the charger okay so this was a lot of fooling around to charge the battery but it did work i've got the battery from about 48 percent up to 100 percent with this setup here zero to 80 percent is constant current and 80 to 100 constant voltage there it goes okay so you can see it just cut out so the boost converter can dial in constant voltage and constant current. The battery is ready to go now. This is my homemade 24 volt, 500 watt e-bike. Now this one here can either run on 24 volts or 36 volts. Now, the reason why is because I overvolted it with a 36 volt controller and it does go much faster and it has more power. But of course the motor is not gonna last as long. So what I gotta do is I gotta convert it back now to 36 volts and this is going to be the bike for it. I have to switch some of these wires over to the other controller. So there's been a few problems with this bike. Chain would keep coming off 
and it never went in the wheel or anything like that. I need to fix that. The chain is not centered on the sprocket, so I believe that's the problem. I'm hoping that sliding the motor this way will help. Another thing I want to do is I want to have a spare chain. Pulled it back a little bit. I can see it's a little better and now I have to cut the crate to get the, the battery in there. I don't know, this thing's huge. I might have to take the seat off and get the negative terminal back in this way. There we go. Oh, you know, all I had to do is just take the bolt out. I wasn't really thinking. Okay, well it's in there. That is crazy. I've got a breaker hooked up. Actually using uh, just a, a row of lithium iron phosphate, 32,700 cells, 12 volt pack here for the fan. Because I was gonna use a buck converter, 40 volts is kind of pushing it. So I figured I'll just put this in here. It doesn't weigh much and it'll it'll run my fan for, for hours My battery is strapped into the bike. It's fully charged, ready to go. So I'm gonna jump on this bike. I'm probably gonna do a range test over a few days. This will be the first test run of the lead time battery. So let's go. Oh, gotta turn on the breaker. It is a little heavier, but as you can see, no issues. We've got the 36 volt lead time trolling motor battery on the back of the e-bike. 15 kilometers in. Obviously, I have a, a lot of range to go on this thing. All right, 25 kilometers in. We're 25 kilometers in, and it's cooling down out here. I have, I'm running out of light. I don't even have a headlight, so I got to get back. Breaker is doing it again. Let's see if there's any power. Yeah, there is, but I don't know how long this is gonna last for. I'm 27 kilometers in already, so I'm just gonna keep going, but I'm not doing it all in one run. kilometers in I had to reset the GPS it cruises nice on the straightaways the flat ground because then I don't worry so much about the chain coming off The chain just popped off again. I hate when this happens. Really easy to get the chain on though. Basically just spin it on. See, it's, it's loose now. I'm pretty far from home. It's best to get this tightened up. All right, so it's, it's tighter now, that's good. Yeah, I've got the chain tightened back up again. I guess I'm gonna continue on. There's a few little issues here. So this is the second day run. Day two, about 54 kilometers because I had to reset this, uh, the GPS cut out. So I went about 27 kilometers today as well. Seems like that's my maximum uh, before I start getting really cold. 46% capacity left. So I'm not gonna get the accurate capacity if I don't take the battery in and keep it warm because it's pretty cold out. It's dropping down to minus temperatures now at night. So the lead time battery is performing really well and I still have lots of capacity left. So day three tomorrow. The lead time battery is working well on this homemade e-bike. Yeah, 50 amp hours is a little ridiculous, but it is working. I'm 20 to go. The phone wasn't even held in there. 
I'm almost 60 kilometers. I'm gonna keep going. Other than the chain coming off and the breaker sometimes tripping, other than that, uh, it does work well. It's about 64 kilometers in right now. Seventy kilometers in, because I have to add twenty-seven to this, plus a couple kilometers. All right, so the day's pretty much dwindled down. So about eighty kilometers in, and I've been doing good speed. Yeah, I was carting around a tablet with me. <laughs> twenty-seven percent capacity. I could probably drain this down even today. I'm gonna do a little amp test. Seven amps. It will hit about 30 amps this motor. That's quite a bit of amps that it draws. 27% in dropping, but I'm over 80 kilometers now, which is pretty impressive. So 90 kilometers, and look at the range here. 16% capacity left, eight amp hours. I'm gonna get going because it's, it's getting pretty late. Can't dead this battery. Still tons of power, and the battery must be close to being dead because I've gone 100 kilometers already, and I still have tons of power. Oh. All right, I'm switch off my motor here. The thing I really like about this battery is that even when the capacity is dropped, like the percentage is really low, it still has a reserve capacity, so it'll keep going. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm really slowing down now. That is it. Finally, the BMS is cut out on this. All right, so I'm back and the battery cut out. Uh, the battery gave me a range of about 107 kilometers. I might get a little more in the warmer weather in the summer, but this motor draws a lot of current. The capacity of this battery is perfect. It has a lots of capacity. Um, 107 kilometers in uh, 10 degree weather, that is really good. So I, I'm really impressed with the battery's performance. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull the battery out of here and then get it onto the, the homemade charger. I was able to get over 100 kilometers on this bike with the lead time 36 volt trolling motor battery. I don't really have a functioning boat right now, so this was the best way I could test the battery. The capacity of this battery is really good. It's either dead on or it's actually a little more than the rated capacity. Now this battery does have reserve, which is nice. Some batteries, they just drop completely off, but this one doesn't do that. I wanna see if I can power this homemade e-bike with the lead time trolling motor battery. Now, I got a problem here. So this controller on the bike is 48 to 72 volts. Unfortunately, that battery's not enough voltage to power it. So how am I going to do that? Well, I got an idea. I've got the boost converter that I use to charge the battery. So will the boost converter actually power the bike? So first thing I gotta do is get this onto the bike and see if it'll work. So the boost converter is rated for 1200 watts, but unfortunately, when you increase voltage, you also increase your current. So the boost converter can only take so many amps. If I can boost the voltage up from the 40 volts, the resting voltage of this battery, to about 48 volts, then I might be able to power this bike. So I have to get the lead time battery onto the back here and then I'm going to hook the battery up to the boost module. Let's get this battery onto the bike and see what we can do. Boost converter, we got 50 volts dialed in. All right, so the battery is on. <laughs> it's hooked up. Switch on the breaker. It is working. It's ready to go. I'm gonna jump on this thing and see how it works. The boost converter is powering the bike. I'm powering a 48 volt e-bike with a 36 volt battery. This is crazy. So now I know that I can do this. I only have one boost module. Um, I don't even have the fan hooked up. It's pretty cold out though. Powering a homemade 48 volt bike with a 36 volt Li time trolling motor battery. It is working. I'm using the boost module. Now I know I can power a bike with a boost module. It's working perfectly. 
does it make any sense to actually power a bike with a boost module? Some people would say you're kind of wasting energy using the boost module. But if I have a battery laying around and I'm not using it, well, why not just use it on a bike? So this allows me to do this. I'm not really losing much wattage through the boost module. It's, it's barely even warming up. I'm only boosting about 10 volts. That's all I really need. Yeah, it's working really good now. It's not even cutting out. I put a couple turns on the current. I'm really liking this Lee Time trolling motor battery because it's allowing me to use it on bikes. If it was a 12 volt, it's gonna be too low uh, for my boost module because I'm gonna have to boost it up uh, three times. If this was 12 volts, I need really heavy wire, and then this boost module would be, would be probably wouldn't be able to do this because I need to triple the current. Um, would I want to go on long runs? I don't know. Um, I'd want to definitely probably have a spare module with me. All right, so what are the advantages from lead acid to lithium iron phosphate? The weight is a huge advantage when it comes to lithium iron phosphate, but the biggest advantage with lithium iron phosphate batteries is the cycle life. This battery can be cycled 4,000 times before its capacity will start dropping. So it doesn't mean the battery will stop working after 4,000 cycles. It just means that the capacity after the 4,000 cycles won't be 100% anymore. It's gonna start going down. A lead acid battery, I'm only expected to get maybe 500 to 1200 cycles. It would take three of my 80 amp hour lead acid batteries to equal one of the Lee Time 36 volt battery. So three of these batteries would be 80 amp hours, 36 volts. Well, you'd have 80 amp hours and only 50 amp hours. Well, that's not how it works. So not only would three of these batteries weigh 150 pounds and the Lee Time battery only weighs 33 pounds, but also the depth of discharge, DOD. So the depth of discharge is important because with lead acid batteries, I really don't want to drop them below 50% because I'm going to start damaging the battery. So I can completely discharge the lithium iron phosphate battery down to let's say 99% compared to the lead acid battery, which I don't want to be dropping down below 50%. So from three of these batteries to one of these, I'm basically getting the same amount of watt hours because I can drain this battery down so much more and I can get the full capacity capacity from the lithium iron phosphate battery compared to the lead acid battery. So I could get more usable capacity from this battery compared to this one. So lithium ion batteries would be lighter, but unfortunately they are not as safe. Lithium iron phosphate batteries, in my opinion, are the, the best way to go right now because these are tried and tested. There are sodium ion batteries. Now they've been around for a few years. The sodium ion are really just in the, the beginning stage. So this battery has a built-in app. The app is really nice to have. You can't just put a meter on a lithium battery and test the voltage because the voltage will hover still are pretty high and the battery could be at 50%. So a voltage meter isn't gonna give me much information with this battery. This is a battery that I could pop in and out of my boat. I can take with me power a 36 volt inverter. So this battery will be around for a long time that I can keep using it, enjoying it. Uh, unlike lead acid batteries, I've gone through so many lead acid batteries, they've failed on me. So if you factor in the cycle life, depth of discharge, the weight, the Lee Time 50 amp hour battery is definitely the better way to go.